Good evening, every pony and every creature. Welcome to tonight's stream at DAG. Well, it's not really a stream, but anyways, I am doing a status update. And I'm also going to give you guys some of my thoughts on the Friends Forever meta. Or at least Friends Forever and how I see the future of Friends Forever coming. With store championships this month happening both having already happened this weekend when this video will become available and the following weekend I wanted to get my thoughts out there on like deck like what I think decks are going to be looking at for the friends forever meta now these are all through experimentation and looking at various decks and trying to build around stuff okay I won't have any images this stream or this video, but let's start with the status update. Why is it that this will not be live? This video will not be live. Well, first things first, welcome to Drata Talks. Welcome to the podcast. Um, anyways, getting back on track. Um, why am I not doing airing this one live? Well... Okay, there's a couple things I want to talk about here. Um, one of which is store championships, which I will get back to here in a moment. Let's talk about the thing with Twitch and OBS and how I do kind of my recordings to kind of go into more detail about that and what's kind of happened. Okay, so what I started doing was, you guys may remember from my last update, I started recording these videos um, and then supposedly uploading them to Twitch and having them scheduled. Well, Twitch requires that you meet a certain limit to actually schedule a premiere. I am not at that limit. I would have to have like 50 viewers, like to 100 viewers on my podcast when it airs on Twitch for that to work. Unfortunately, that will never happen, I do not think. At least not anytime soon. So, what I'm going to do instead, so what I do instead is I record them during the week, and then I go ahead and air them via OBS as a, as a playback on OBS. And that immediately, that makes it so it's kind of live and kind of not. So, okay. So that's kind of what I have to do. Now, why isn't this going to happen for the next two weeks? Why am I not going to do it this way? Why am I going to upload it and just have it available by 8 p.m. rather than... Um, actually airing it. This is because of one factor, store championships. So this weekend, the first weekend of store championships, which is at the end of this weekend's when this video will be up, um, I will be in Illinois <laughs> until very, very late at night on Sunday because I am participating in two store championships in Illinois. Um... So, I'm not able to actually up, I'm not able to at 8 o'clock be home in time to start airing this, nor will I have internet access besides my phone at that time. Okay, so I'm going to be going to two store championships this weekend, and then I'll have two more store championships the following weekend, which will probably take a while to complete, I may be able to do something live then, but I don't know what it's going to be yet. Uh, it'll probably be another MLP CCG video. Okay, with the basic status kind of update why this weekend's going on, um, let me explain kind of where... Let's talk about the actual Friends Forever meta, the meat of this subject. Well, also, let's go back to status update real quick. You may have noticed that I did not make a post regarding this video. That is because I only post to the groups for a live video so people actually attend. Since this won't be live, um, you're just going to have to view it later. And just know that I did upload a video so you guys have content. 
I will be uploading every week. It's not like that's going away. It's just whether or not it's live or whether or not it's just strictly uploaded is variable. A couple other things. You may have noticed that my videos currently do not have an intro. That is because I'm getting a custom song made for my channel, as well as I'll be redoing the intro. So that is in the works. Um, so please bear in mind that right now I don't have an intro because a new one is being built custom made for my channel. Um, so I'll hopefully we'll have that for you guys here soon. Um, okay, let's talk about the actual like meta of Friends Forever. There's a couple things I kind of want to talk about, and that's color combination. In the past, uh, especially for Sequestria and, may and even before, many decks ran on the dual color system. What do I mean by that? The dual color system is where you would build your deck with the most maximum number of colors being two, meaning you would have your primary and your secondary. Very rarely would you have a terrarity color or you would have a fourth color, even rarer, you'd have a fifth, and you'd almost never build six color. So... Many players may be wondering, but yeah, that's the standard building system. We would use dual color. We would use only two colors. This keeps consistency. This keeps, um, this maintains the deck. This keeps it the deck making sure that you're drawing what you need. This way you're not having the color fix as much as possible. Friends Forever is a meta where... I do not think we can keep it dual colored anymore. You really can't. Um, you can try to build dual color, and maybe there's a dual color combination that I'm not aware of. Either way, going into a third color and even a fourth may be more ideal. A lot of the stronger decks that are coming out are usually th at least three colors. Now, a very strong color combination right now I see is purple, orange, white. Um, this gives you access to things like Miss Main, which in any white deck, they ha they should be running Miss Main at all costs. Miss Main is probably going to be one of the defining cards in the meta. You got Miss Main. You got um, Cover to Cover. You have Starlight Glimmer, Guidance Counselor. You have Factory Jack in that. Um, you have access to the dragons, so you could do things like Troublemaker Control or something else. Um, as far as a control, maybe even aggro-ish color, um, it works really, really well. Um, may, and maybe another color combination that's really strong is purple, pink, white. Um, that's a potential there, too. That could be a very strong color combination. I've experimented it with a little bit. It seems to work, and it's a very good control combination. As for aggro, blue, white, pink is a very good color combination. Um, a good mid-range deck would be pink, orange, white. Very good mid-range slash control combination there. Uh, blue, yellow... Um, white could be a combination. I don't know how strong that would be. Granted, I haven't seen anything blue, white, yellow yet. But that would be an interesting combination. Uh, you could go blue, orange, yellow. Um, aggro decks will try to stay to two colors as much as possible. But I really feel like that adding in a third color might actually help aggro a little bit better, providing it with some extra tools or providing it with some extra stuff. And we'll see after the store championships what kind of decks do well. Another thing that we're going to start seeing in the Friends Forever meta is things that look completely out of place. So what, what do I mean by that? There's an aggro deck that runs Tempest, and Grubber as its primary opener. 
Um, it's an aggro deck, but it looks and pl plays at first like a control deck, and next thing you know, it's aggroing. Um, we're looking at decks where in the early game, they may be more control-based to help get them jump-started. While you could have a control deck that, you know, starts off very aggro-ish, but moves into a control later on. And that's what we're looking at. Hybrid decks are going to start becoming more prevalent as I think the meta goes on. Now, these predictions are just that, predictions. And also my personal opinion on the different decks that have been produced. So I do not think that the, that the Friends Forever meta is going to be something that MLP CCG has never seen before. And a lot of players are going to have to reevaluate how they view the card game. What's happening is, is that many players are still stuck in the old thought of the old game. Build it two colors. Make sure you have consistency. Um, play control. Play aggro. Don't do both. You know, it's a very old style thinking. And Friends Forever opens up a wide variety of options. Um, I don't see one deck dominating the meta this time around. When we had the Sequestria, the start of the Sequestria and Beyond meta, and Core was first released, we had one deck that appeared in Feb around like January, and it was Farm, AJ Farm. It was so strong that it lasted up until BronyCon, the week before BronyCon, AJ was AJ Ambassador of Honesty was finally banned in core. It was pretty much a monocolor deck splashing in the pink for main six party planners and party hard. But it was a farming deck. And it was so destructive to the meta that everyone was using it. Friends Forever meta mixes up a lot of things. Especially in Harmony, where we have Paradox Pony and Dr. Hooves mains are now legal. With them legal, uh, this opens up a variety of options for the Friends Forever Harmony meta. This opens up a ton of stuff. If Harmony wasn't already so deep and so complicated, <laughs> now we just make it even more interesting. By adding in the two sands and time mains. Um, core format is looking to be very easily three to four color decks. Um, aggro decks will still stick to two. And as much as I like blue aggro, I feel like that there are better aggro decks. And definitely different aggro decks will play better in different metas. Blue aggro might fare better in a control style meta. While something like four color aggro will strut will be better in a more blue meta, while control will do better in a control and aggro meta, it may not do well in a combo meta. And farm, we don't know too much about farm. There's a couple farming options right now in core, but I do not think that it's really gonna be all that. Um, I don't think farm and core is a very viable option. You can do it. I'm not saying don't do it, but if someone discovers a farming deck that is meta, please let me know. <laughs> I've been digging and digging. I think the best farming main I can think of is Ambassador of Loyalty. But that being said, I feel like that Friends Forever really stirred the pot. <laughs> if you know what I mean. It made a big mess of things. Which is a good thing. But we're not going to be seeing this meta like we did last time. It's not a repeat of AJ Farm. It's not. We're looking at things that are totally different. And we're seeing that. It mixed everything up and for some that's a bad thing 
And for others, it's a good thing. Honestly, if a set can come out that makes 12 decks viable versus just one, I say that set is a massive success. Um, they did a very good job with the Friends Forever set. Everyone thinks that some of the cards are just too powerful. Things like Timble. Things like uh, temp uh, Endless Friendship. Miss Main. Um, Mage Meadowbrook. Uh, Pony of Shadows. Some people thought that these cards were just too strong. And even in my set review, I thought some of them were a little strong. And I thought Timble was going to be totally meta, with Herd of Adoring fans in the same colors and everything. Sorry, hit my mic. <laughs> but Timble wasn't as powerful as people were hoping. Old Money, people thought was so strong in the beginning. Old Money felt a little too powerful. And as much as I'd like to agree that it still is, it's really not. Honestly, 4 for 2 power is hardly worth it, even if you do get a banish out of it and meticulous too. But the thing is, is 2 power in this meta means nothing. Um, if you have a friend with 2 power in play, that does you nothing. Really, you have to have it where, you know, the higher power is going to be more dominant. Honestly, what's holding Timble back is its color combination. Yellow-white really isn't all that effective, and we don't really have enough good changelings to make Timble worthwhile. I think Timble will be a better card when the next set comes out, but I do not see it being used in the current meta. Unless someone can find a way to do a Timble combo, I really don't see Timble being all that strong. Sure, in one turn, you can score a bunch of points. But the moment you drop a Timble, someone's just going to be like, oh, that's gone. Miss Main. The issue with Miss Main is her 3 AT cost. And as good as she is, um, she also lets your opponent get back a card. Sure, you're going to score an additional point for this, but this really makes it harder to decide when to use Miss Main, and you really have to be selective on what you return. You can't just spam Miss Main, as people thought you might be able to do. Sure, she's going to be used in several combo decks, but in all reality, Miss Main is limited on what she can accomplish. Uh, Princess Twilight Sparkle, Endless Friendship, is a very powerful card. Two Gives two power to all your other characters, and your friends can't be frightened, and its uh, removal protection is great. But it doesn't stop things like Berry Punch and Orange Swirl, or um, Sonotic Dusk. Um, it's really easy to bypass her, um, her ability. Um, she's still vulnerable to a lot of pink removal. And as much as she tries to protect against pink's removal, uh, most of the time they're just going to take control of Twilight, retire her for some ability or belly flop and get rid of another one of your things. And... Plus, she's five power. She's five cost with three color ranks, which means that she's not going to be great in a lot of decks. Not the least of which she's weak in her color combination, which is orange, purple, yellow. That yellow is what throws it off. Um, had she been like Midnight Luna from Sequestria, where she was purple, orange, white, she'd be very, very strong. Now, I see a lot of players, you know, struggling right now to build their decks, but we're, but that's a good thing. We want people, I, I know it sounds counterproductive for Drada to be like, but we want it to be harder for players. It's not that so much we want it harder to be players, we want players to experiment more. 
and this set still has a lot of opportunity. And before everyone's like, but Drada, the meta will be defined here in a couple weeks. And I'm like, no, it will not be defined. It will be starting to get defined. And so many people are worked over on the perfect deck. There isn't one. There really isn't. There's like four to five, maybe even six decks that can be used in the current meta right now that do very, very well. Um, some old but goodies. Chaos Control. Um, BRB. Uh, Clony Combo. You know, these are all decks that have the potential to be very, very successful. And maybe even some new ones. For example, the deck I will be running tomorrow at the core championship in Illinois will be a new deck. Now, I'm not going to reveal this deck because it is not my deck. I'm not going to reveal it here on this video, but you will see it. And I, when we do the review of the tournaments two weeks from now, well, maybe, yeah, probably two weeks from now because we're in a major MLPCCG season, um, I'll reveal... I'll talk about which decks and what. Um, but I did not develop this deck. I'm not the creator. I am just using it because I like its play style. So, uh, and anyone that knows me knows that I'm not exactly the best creator for decks. I don't create decks because I don't rely on myself creating decks. I play what, I look at what other people have built and I try to tailor them more to my needs and my play style. I like playing decks that are complete, fun, and a blast to play. Sure, a lot of people don't like my decks, but that's because I do my research. And I look at things a little bit more thoroughly. I had hammered really home Unicorn Control, but Unicorn Control is really grindy and really slow. And that's its issue. It's not fast enough for a meta. I know I had been hammering that all along. But it is not a good deck to use in a tournament. <laughs> that's what I found out. So anyways guys. That's probably going to wrap it up for this episode. If you guys want to contact me at any time. You can contact me via Ga Drada Arcana Gaming on Facebook. Or Drada.Arcana at gmail.com. Or... You can, if you're looking for any of my videos, uh, you can check my YouTube page or this Twitch channel. Um, as always, guys, no but draw to comments. And um, I will see you guys on the next video. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.